Okay, good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the uh, QuickBooks ODBC demonstration. If you recall, we stopped last time uh, by stating that uh, to meaningfully use the QuickBooks ODBC driver, one has to understand the QuickBooks database structure. That is, one has to know what tables are present and what relationships those tables have with one another. How does one find that information? Well, unfortunately, that information is only available online. And so to see it, we're going to have to fire up a browser here. So we'll go to uh, a particular website, www qodbc.com this is the web page of the company that created the QuickBooks ODBC driver so we'll pay a visit to that page here and uh, go to the driver page we want to see the QuickBooks ODBC technical reference and the data layouts and uh, the region US of A okay here we have a table overview, both alphabetically and by grouping, of all the tables that are within QuickBooks. Let's take a look at the alphabetical listing here. Here are all, here are all the tables. There's a considerable number of them, as we can see. If you recall last time, we uh, examined the check table and here it is right here the check table and we can see the details of this table by going to the detail page and here we find all the fields in the check table all of them here plus all the properties of the fields but more importantly we can also find the relationships of the check table with other tables. We can find those by going to the table relation page and here we find those. Here we see all the relationships from the check table to other tables. For example, the check table is linked to this other table here via this transaction ID field and so on for all these other fields. Now this is very important because the information contained in the check table is, is limited. We want other information that can be found only in these related tables. And this is how we find out what those related tables are. So once again, here are all the tables by group. For example, the check table is also in the transaction group. Here it is here. It's also in the alphabetical listing group. Here it is here. And all the details and all the relations thereof. Now, let me explain this further by going to the QuickBooks program itself. I'm going to kill that and also kill my connection here for security reasons. So we have QuickBooks open here with a sample company, the sample manufacturing company, and we'll go to vendors, the vendor center, and we'll take a look at a particular vendor here, the vendor, my insurance company. So here we have all the checks for this vendor, and uh, we have a total amount for each check. This total amount is what we find in the check table. However, if we examine a particular check, let's say check 5080, we find that uh, there are itemized accounts associated with this particular check. This amount is broken down 
into these various expense items. Each amount for each expense item. The, the, the total here is a total amount here. Now, these individual items and amounts are not present in the check table. However, they are present in a table that's related to the check table. And so we'll see how this works using ODBC. We have Excel opened here and uh, we'll get our data from data from other sources from Microsoft Query using the QuickBooks ODBC driver. And here we have all the QuickBooks tables, the same table listing as we saw online. And we'll pick the check account. And we'll also pick a related table, the check expense line table. We'll add that there. That's all we need, we'll close that. Now, we can see that Microsoft Query has discovered that these two tables are related. And there's a line there that's showing these two tables are related. They're linked. And we can find out exactly what's going on here by going down to the... Uh, we see that uh, the two tables are linked. Specifically, they're linked via this transaction ID field. And we can see by double clicking on this line, we can see that Microsoft Query has made this join for us. It has joined these two tables. What this means, and it, and it describes right here, that only records from the check expense, which is this table, and the check, which is this table, only those records where check expense transaction ID, that's that, equals check transaction ID. So only those records will be uh, pulled where the two IDs match. That's what that means. So we'll close that. Now we can pick our fields. We'll pick, first of all, transaction date. Put that right there. And we'll wait for the query to be executed which may take a bit of time. There it comes. We'll also put the uh, reference number, which is the check number. And we'll wait for the query to be completed. And there it goes. And we'll also put, like last time, the payee entity reference full name or the vendor put that there. Okay, and now we can put the amount. However, again, the amount in this table is the total amount. We don't want that. We want the amounts of each individual expense item on the check, and that comes from this table. So we find out those fields are over here. The we want the expense line account reference full name, which is the uh, expense account. And we'll wait once again for a few seconds. And the expense line amount. And we're waiting again. And there it comes. Now, our query is finished. We transfer that query to uh, Microsoft Excel. And again, make a table out of it. Put it beginning here. And we're waiting for the query to be executed. And uh, here it comes. There it comes. Now, here we have it. Transaction date check number, vendor name, and for each check, the individual expense account items, as well as the expense account amounts. Now let's filter this by 
selecting one vendor, the vendor My Insurance Company, and we'll sort the dates. And here we see a check number 5080. There are three numbers, three same date, same check number, same vendor, and yet the individual expense account and the amounts for that particular check. This information we can see is the same as we pulled previously from, from QuickBooks. Same check number 5080, same date, and here are the same expense accounts. And the same information as we've pulled from o ODBC. That's how it works. Now, one might ask, well, what's the point? We can pull the same thing here. So why bother going through all this trouble? Well, it just may happen that we want information that uh, does not correspond to an already pre-built QuickBooks report. And then we can use ODBC to produce that for us. Or, let's just close these things down here. We know that we can produce a report in QuickBooks, a standard report, check detail. We can also export that information to Excel using these uh, menu entries here. But that export may not be the way we want it. In other words, we may have to you know, delete things, move things around. Whereas with ODBC, we can extract the same data, but using the format that we would prefer. So there are two reasons to use ODBC rather than QuickBooks directly. Also, keep in mind that uh, we can access data from QuickBooks using other programs besides Excel. We can use Microsoft Access. We can use uh, PowerPoint. We can use uh, some other program. And uh, we can analyze the data in whatever way we choose using the information uh, extracted from ODBC. So that's basically how ODBC works. And it's rather simple, rather s straightforward. The hard part, in my opinion, the hardest part is uh, finding out what tables to use and finding out how those tables are r related. So once again, we'll examine the online information here by going to qodbc.com and uh, taking a look again at the information. Again, the alphabetical listing of all the tables in the QuickBooks database. For each table, we can examine the table detail, all the fields in that particular table, and we can also examine the relationships of that table, how that table relates to other tables. And keep in mind that a table can relate to other tables, and then those tables in turn can relate to other tables, and so on. And we can determine all that from this data here, which is quite comprehensive. But depending upon our needs or our desires, we can uh, conceive of a scheme to use ODBC for us, to help us out. And that's basically how it all works. And we hope that the, that the viewer has found this uh, useful or at least has found this interesting. And we thank you all for watching.